if you're not on a Exadata platform or cloud platform where automatic indexing is there in the background for you, then not only is detecting when you need indexes a challenge, then detecting if you don't need an index is also a challenge. Now, we've had a crack at this before. Way back, I think, in Oracle 9, we added a thing called index monitoring. And what you would do is you would do alter index, index name, and turn it to monitoring. And then in V$ object usage, there'd be a view that says, yes, this index is now being monitored. And how did it work? You would run a query and, for example, do ID equals one. And then from time to time, you would go check V$ object usage. And it would say, yes, the particular index that backs up this query was used. But one of the shortcomings of that solution way back in Oracle 9 was that the detection was done when we parsed the query. In the same way, the optimizer would come along and say, yes, in the optimizer plan, it says I'm going to be using that index. And therefore, we would flick the flag that says, yes, this index has been captured and marked as in use. Consider the following scenario, though, where I've got a parent and a child table, and I'm using on delete cascade. Then if I delete a row from the parent, and want to avoid locking the entire child table, I would have an index on the appropriate column in the child table. If I delete a row from the parent, what does my index monitoring say? It says that index was not used on the child because it wasn't detected at parse time. I parse my query. The query only pertains to a delete statement on the parent table. It has no knowledge of the child index or the child table because that's tucked away in the referential integrity constraint. We might go ahead and then drop that index. And of course, we end up then with a disaster because we relied on the information given to us from index monitoring. Thankfully, a better option now exists. We took a fresh look at the whole implementation of index monitoring because obviously we need something that's robust to back up our automatic indexing infrastructure. And some of those elements are now available to you in any version of the Oracle database. If you describe DBA index usage, you can see it's got for each index name in your database, various metrics about how the index was used, if at all. Returning to that previous example where I deleted from a parent table and was relying on a child index on the child table to ensure that we didn't get locking problems and that the delete on the children records was efficient, then you can see in that same example, DBA index usage did indeed pick up that use of the index. That's because we're doing the evaluation of index usage at execution time. Was that index required in the execution of a statement as opposed to parsing as it was in the past? Now, this doesn't mean that as a DBA, you can just forget about the entire use of your own brain and just rely on DBA index usage views to determine what indexes you should drop. Yes, we've improved by moving from the parse phase to the execution phase, but believe it or not, indexes can be more than just about execution. Consider the following example. I create a table here and I've got various columns, but the key ones are C1 and C2, and there's a correlation between these columns. If I query the number of rows that both have C1 and C2 equals 12, we can see the result there is 200. But what does the optimizer think? Well, the optimizer is miles off. It thinks we've only got four rows that match C1 and C2 because it doesn't know about the correlation between those two columns. Let's say for reasons such as application performance or foreign keys, I went and created an index on C1 and C2. Now, when I do that query on the table, you can see the optimizer has got its estimate absolutely correct. It didn't use the index. We're still doing table access full, but the presence of that index gave the optimizer information about the distribution of keys between C1 and C2. Because of that, it actually had a better optimizer estimate, even though it didn't end up using the index. So sometimes just the presence of the index can be beneficial, not because of the index itself, but because of the optimizer statistics that are associated with that index. Don't get me wrong, having an index just to provide optimizer statistics is probably not the most efficient way of doing it. We could have solved this problem with extended statistics. We could create some extended statistics on the two column combination of C1 and C2. That gives us a new cryptic column name that goes onto our table. We would then recalculate stats. And now the execution plan without the presence of the index still comes up with the correct estimate. However, this example goes to show that you can't just drop indexes just because they don't appear as being actively used in DBA index usage. Sometimes indexes will be used 
even if they're not being used at execution time for your queries.